Hi, Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Last Affair. And today we're just going to be doing some routine maintenance on the boat, cleaning out the uh, air filters for both the uh, reverse cycle air conditioners in the boat. Uh, tools you're going to need for this, frankly it all depends on the setup of your boat. could be nothing more than a uh, small brush and some water, or you might need a screwdriver to take the front grates off, um, off the return ducts, depending on where, the, where they happen to be and what the accessibility looks like. Before you get started, this works best if you actually have the units off for a period of several hours. That way everything's good and dry and you don't have any condensation built on the screen or the, or the filter, making it a little bit easier to sort of brush the dirt or the dust right off of it. Here's the scenario we're wanting to resolve. If you notice, I actually have the word FIL flashing on this particular display. So as you can see in our unit, it's a marine air. It's pretty much the same thing as cruise air but it's just a small filter. There's a lip right here. I don't know if you can see there's a lip and it slides up above that lip. And you can kind of see the dirt and dust that happens to be on this right now. So that's really the first step. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to take a, a brush, a small brush, and a, a vacuum. And I'm just going to vacuum out the, the fins here as well. It's best to try and do this again, like I said, without, and this will all get wet with condensation. And certainly the drip tray has water in it as well. So best to try and uh, do this dry, but it'll let that vacuum work a lot better and keep it from sticking or getting gummed up inside of there. Alright, so once you have your filter out, you can kind of see how this was caked up. You just want to, uh, you just want to use a, some kind of a small brush, and you want to brush this, um, brush this off of there. It typically comes off fairly easily if it's good and dry, as I mentioned before. So we're going to go ahead and just do exactly that. And I try and brush this a little bit slow because you can already see the dust flakes starting to come up off of it. I'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of this stuff off, and you can you can see the mess it's making, which is the reason I do it right here on the companionway steps. That way I can use the vacuum to just clean it up afterwards. I don't know if you see that. You can actually see the line, the difference in, in where it's been done and where it hasn't. Now, I do like to, uh, to use a vacuum every so often real quick. I actually just continue to run this across the top of it with the with this good and perpendicular to it. The whole idea here is I really want to get all that dust out of it. I also like to turn it over and kind of do it on both sides. I think it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and do that, get it clean all the way around, and hopefully keep those fins from getting any more dirt or gunk up in them. There we go. All right, putting these back in really is just a reversal of the exact same process. So what we're going to do is just slide this right into that little groove. You want to get it on both sides and then just slowly feed this down. It'll get caught a little bit on some of the fins, but again, as long as you do it gently, it works just fine. And you can see if it starts to come out of that track, just make sure you put it back in. The whole idea is you want to keep the dirt from going in there behind it. And there you go. As I mentioned earlier, you might need some tools depending on your particular setup and in this particular case in the salon I have a, a return air grill um, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. Uh, you can actually get access to it through a small opening next to it. It's just not very easy angle to be able to do the work so uh, this is actually really easy just taking these four screws out real quick. Hold it in place so we don't mar the floor at all. Take this grate right down here. The interesting thing is you can really see just how just how dusty um, this area is. It's surprising actually, you know, being on the water and still having this much dust. But we do. So, the next step here is to remove this filter, and just like the one in the back, we actually want to just lift, typically lift this directly up. In this particular case, it's a little easier for me to just unhook it from one side and remove it out that way. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then just like before, I'll go ahead and, um, I'll go ahead and get the vacuum, and we'll go ahead and vacuum this and, and get it good and clean. Um, when you're vacuuming it, these little fins, I think everybody knows, right, they bend very easily. So you want to be really careful you do not bend these. You can actually see down here it looks like it was rubbed a little bit. So 
Uh, I'm going to be cautious we don't make that any worse. It will not cool as well if those fins are bent. Um, the other thing I'm noticing as I'm touching this is it's a little bit damp, so it still has a bit of condensation on it. Um, that means it's not going to clean quite as easily. So what I'll do on this one is, as I'm vacuuming, I'll hold the vacuum below and I'll use a small brush and I'll brush this down. Um, I do expect with this one I'll end up getting a little bit of sort of a muddy consistency on the brush. All right, as I mentioned before, we're just going to go ahead and we just want to sort of brush this very gently with the fins. So we're loosening up any of that stuff that's right on the edge there. It tends to cake up right near the very top where there's a gap in the um, filter. But now that we have that, let's go ahead and vacuum this. So one of the things I like to do is run the vacuum with a little perpendicular to this, and it's really important to notice I'm not putting any pressure. I'm actually just holding this just a hair above those fins because I don't want to bend them as I go. And then once you have vacuumed the, all, the entire grate, I do like to sort of clean out all the dust around the surrounding area and the cavity where this uh, unit is kept. Alright, the next step here is really to just put this filter back in. So, I like to put these in the same way they came out. Um, if it gets a little bit uh, kind of gr uh, crusty or gunky down on the bottom where it goes into the drip pan, I tend to keep that on the bottom side. So, again, this unit, instead of sliding from the top, it's a little easier to slide it in one side. And you want to be really careful not to bend those fins, remember. And then we're going to do the same over here on this side. And once we have it behind there, we'll just slide it right down into place. And that goes all the way down to the drip pan, so that's all the way down to the very, I don't know if you can see this, but it's all the way down to the very bottom here. And we're nice and clean, and now it's just time to put the grate back on. This works just fine. Alright, well set. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and reset the timer for the filter reminder. What you have to do for this is get into programming mode. So from the off position, you're going to press and hold the power button until you see P, and uh, come up on the display. P01 happens to be the pro first programming mode. So we're actually want to go to, there's two parameters in this particular version of the software that uh, that take care of the filter timer. So we're going to go up to P20 and P20 is what sets the number of hours before the next reminder. This is a times 10 value. So you, a 50 right here means that the timer is set to give me a reminder to change the filter after 500 hours. And I want to leave it like that. You also see that Programming mode 21 has a 50 in it. Again, this is a times 10 factor, and this is the counter that tells me how many hours have actually elapsed since I changed the last filter. So, in this particular case, it's a 50, which again, times 10 means it's between 500 and 599 hours. When that went to 600 hours of runtime, this would change to a 60. So, to reset this value, which we need to do because we want to reset that timer back to zero, we just have to hit the up or down um, button, either one, and we're, uh, we're set. So, programming 21 is now back to a zero mode, and we're just going to parameter through here real quick. Now, I like to go back to the original values and make sure that my numbers um, took. So, I'm going to go back to P20. We should be at 50 because I want to set it for 500 hours. We are. Go to P21. This should be zero. My timer should have been reset. It is. So now all we need to do is press and hold the power button to get out of programming mode. A24 is displayed. That happens to be the, the software version in this particular um, year unit. So we're all set. The filter message is gone. And now it's time to uh, turn on the unit and give it a test. So you can see it's, it's 81 degrees in here right now. So I've had it off for a, uh, well through the night. Blue light comes on, which tells me that the air conditioner is kicked on. It is set to automatic, so it will automatically do heat or air. It's a, a mode setting I have chosen. Um, and in this particular case, I'm looking. I have it set. Let's just. I'll leave it set at 76, which is plenty cool for um, for this back uh, stateroom. So there we go. We're set. You can hear the unit running, and uh, I can feel the cold air blowing on my legs.